So now that you know how to do electron configuration for both principal energy levels, sublevels, and orbitals, let me show you how you can actually pinpoint a specific electron. It's kind of like the way the post office gets your mail to you. You've got a zip code, and the zip code's got some information in it. You may not even realize it. Here's a map of Orange County and Ulster County, New York. Notice that every single one of the zip codes begins with a 1. Every single one of them. A group of zip codes down here begin with 109. A group of zip codes up here begin with 125. Zip codes down here begin with 105. Zip codes up here, 127. The zip code gives you information. Now, as you go from east to west across the country, did you know that the first number of the zip code increases? So that by the time you get out to California, your zip codes begin with a 9. Just in the same way a zip code can be used to pinpoint a town, quantum numbers can be used to pinpoint the location of an electron. Now remember from the quantum mechanical model, we can't actually know exactly where an electron is located, but we can pinpoint its general location in space. And that's what a quantum number is there to do. It gives you the position of the electron in terms of its energy level, sublevel, orbital, and whether it's an upspin electron or a downspin electron. So unlike zip codes which have five digits, a quantum number has four digits. The first quantum number, n, stands for the principal energy level or principal quantum number. The first principal energy level is given a quantum number of 1. The second principal energy level is given a quantum number of 2. The third energy level, a quantum number of 3. The fourth, a quantum number of 4, and so on. The second quantum number, L, is the sublevel quantum number. The S sublevel is given a quantum number of 0. Now, this is where it sometimes confuses people because people think that we should start our counting with 1. We don't. S has been assigned a quantum number of 0, P has a quantum number of 1, D has a quantum number of 2, and F has a quantum number of 3. Principal quantum number, levorotary magnetic, that's what it stands for. Anyway, M is the orbital quantum number. In other words, which orbital is the electron located in? The center orbital is always designated as orbital 0. In the S sublevel, there is only one orbital, so it by default is the center orbital. In a P sublevel, there's the center orbital. D sublevel, there's the center orbital. F sublevel, there's the center orbital. Going to the left, it follows the same process as a number line. Negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Going to the right, just like a number line, the numbers become more positive. Positive 1, positive 1, positive 2. Positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. 0 means the center. Plus 2 would mean 2 orbitals to the right of center. Minus 1 means 1 orbital to the left of center. So by using a single digit, we can indicate exactly what orbital it's located in. And then finally, the spin quantum number. If the arrow is an up arrow, that would be a plus 1 half. And if it's a down arrow, it's minus 1 half. And by using this, we can find the quantum number of any electron in a box diagram. Here's how it works. Let's say we pick at random, I don't know, let's pick this electron right here. The first quantum number would be for the principal energy level. It's in the second principal energy level. Its quantum number starts with 2. The P sublevel, remember S is 0, P is 1, D is 2, and F is 3. Since it's in the P sublevel, its second quantum number is 1 to demonstrate it's in the P sublevel. The third quantum number is where is the orbital that the electron is in in relation to the center orbital? This is 0, this is plus 1, that's minus 1. So minus 1 is the third quantum number. And then the final quantum number is for spin. Is it an up arrow, plus 1 half, or a down arrow, minus 1 half? Since it's a down arrow, the final quantum number is minus one half. And those four digits will identify a specific electron in an orbital notation.
Let's try another one. This electron is in the fourth energy level. The S sublevel is given a quantum number of zero. S is zero, P is one, D is two, F is three. The S orbital is the only orbital, so by default it is the center orbital, so we put a zero for that. And the up arrow is plus one half. What about this electron here? Third energy level, quantum number of three. D sublevel, S is zero, P is one, D is 2, D is 2. It's in the first orbital to the right of center, plus 1. 0, minus 1, minus 2, plus 1, plus 2. And it's the down arrow, minus 1 half. And that's the four digit zip code, if you will, for that electron. Now, what if we wanted to find an electron that had a particular quantum number, for example? Well, we take this electron and we're going to excite it from this position to that position. Let's say we're going to f try to find this electron here. 2, 1, negative 1, plus 1 half. And we had to locate it somewhere on our box diagram. 2 means the second energy level. That narrows it down to one of these eight electrons here that are in the second energy level. 1, well S is 0, P is 1. That narrows it further to the p sublevel. Minus 1, that means that the electron is in the orbital to the left of center. That narrows it down to that orbital. And then finally, positive 1 half means the up arrow. So by using quantum numbers, we can zero in on exactly which electron we're trying to locate. Let's try another one. Let's do 3, 0, 0 plus one-half. Three means the third energy level. That narrows it down to one of these electrons here that are all in the third energy level. Zero means the S sublevel. That narrows it down to there. Zero means the center orbital. Well, that's the only orbital we have. That narrows it down to that orbital. And plus one half is the up arrow. So that's the electron that has that quantum number. And that's how you locate electrons using their quantum numbers.